Hey everyone and welcome to this video. So today I wanted to talk about six browser based online tools that I find absolutely valuable to my day to day as a front end developer. And I think these are things that every front end developer should have in their tool belt. Now there's six on this list, but we could very easily have gone to 10, 20 or whatever. But these are some of the six that I think are really important. So without further ado, Let's go check them out. So let's go through the first one. Now for me, and probably you, regex can be almost an impenetrable pattern that on first sight kind of makes you run to the hills. But there is a tool out there that can help. It is regexer. Now, similar to, I guess, CodePen or something like that, you can have individual like regexers. I guess that's the way to call it. You can uh, essentially save it. You can sign in and have all your regex uh, patterns saved. And the reason why that's amazing is if you're ever doing code reviews, if you're ever investigating legacy code, or if you're writing your own regex patterns, this is a great place to play around, have a playground for regex um, and test your regex. And most importantly, have this tool explain step by step what you're actually doing with your regex. So let's take this for an example. This is the default example. It says it matches a character in the range from A to F and the character code from 65 to 70 and it's case sensitive. So it goes down here and tells you exactly what it's doing bit by bit. So if you didn't know, now you know. Um, but we'll put in our own one just to test it. So this one is to test GUIDs or GUIDs um, from like charger stations. And then we'll just put a random uh, charger ID in here. So this is more for like EV charging and things like that. Um, for those of you who don't know, I work at uh, an EV charging company and I build platforms for them, but that's a side thing. Um, so something like this, this checks for a regex pattern uh, that does match this, that is uh, 12 characters long and has uh, this type of sort of pattern. So if we look here, it takes a step by step and it says it does match the beginning of the string. It matches any digital character because this is alphanumeric. There are numbers in here. And what we're trying to do is essentially check that this is the right pattern for us. So this is kind of validation. Um, and it takes you through step by step and tells you exactly uh, what it does. And this is great for people who don't want to sit there for ages trying to break down each individual section and figure out what's going on. It's all explained here. So regexer is one that I would highly recommend and make sure to bookmark that after this video. Now the next one is one of my favorites. This is Wappalyzer. I've probably had this since month one of being a front end developer. This has like served me for six or seven years really well. Um, Wappalyzer, for those who don't know, is a way to browse technologies on a page. So for example, if we go on the Wappalyzer page, it's a browser extension first off, and it's, I think it's on all the browsers. So we're talking Firefox and Chromium and all the Chromium browsers like Brave, Chrome, Opera, and even Arc, I think. So if we go up here and click the Wappalyzer uh, logo, it then gives us a drop down of all the technologies on here. So you can immediately tell that they're using Vue.js and they're using Next or, or Nuxt on top of that. And then it tells you exactly what CDNs, what payment processes they're using and all the technologies. And it even has kind of a guess at some technologies that they're using because it's not always clear what patterns or technologies they're using. So it guesses that it's using module federation, but there you go. Uh, Wappalyzer, great for just debugging some technologies, uh, for research purposes, if you wanna go and find out how something's done and then say, okay, I wanna go and build something like that. Or if there is a product that you really like and you kinda just wonder how they built it. So if you wanna know how they built Reddit, Amazon, all that stuff, Wappalyzer is a good starting place for all of that. So if not just for your own curiosity, it's actually really good for work and your day-to-day -day, uh, process. So this is quite cool. 
Now Scribe is the third one and it's one that I've actually already made a video on uh, so go check that one out. It goes into way more detail than I'm about to go into but I'm going to give you a general overview of what it is. It's a step-by-step -step guide to instantly create documentation so I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'll actually make a Scribe right now. So it is a browser extension so you click that uh, in the top right. Uh, I'm using Brave so I can get it on uh, I think any Chromium browser. So the way we're going to try Scribe out is if we go to the top right and click the extension and then just click start recording. You can see here it's now recording uh, and then we'll just start clicking around. So we'll click this and we'll click change role and then we will go to creator and then we'll switch back to team admin and then we'll click update role. And then we simply press this button here and complete the recording. And it should have made it. So how to change user roles in Scribe How Workspace. So already super detailed and it just goes through step by step, taking screenshots, telling you where you've clicked it, exactly what you've done and takes you through the whole process on how to recreate and update the role. And the best thing is you can go back, uh, update any of these descriptions. You can update the title and that's that scribe. Now this is amazing if you want to hand this over to QA, if you want to just show uh, non-technical staff how something is done, if you're sending this to client facing staff, the possibilities for how useful this is is endless and this is something that I use day to day in my work uh, all the time. I think it's fantastic. Uh, especially if you correspond with like a QA team or if you've got a QA team in your squad if they're checking tickets you can just show them a way to reproduce it and attach that to the ticket if you want to tell uh, someone in your team how to recreate something they can do it locally on their version of whatever ticket or branch they're working on this is what you would use and it's amazing it saves so much time it can save uh, a call it can save an email it can save uh, a dm it's it's really good except the dm that you send with the link of this minus that and that's it someone instantly has it you don't have to be signed in uh, you don't have to have an account with scribe you don't even have to pay for scribe um, this is all a completely free tool so yeah scribe again i love it i'll always recommend it a great tool to have as a front-end dev. Now the next one probably comes as no surprise. This is one of the most important tools out there. Now Chrome DevTools is absolutely amazing uh, for several reasons. There are so many tools available in Chrome DevTools. Um, if we open this up here, obviously you've got the element inspector, which is your bread and butter. So if I wanted to just quickly check the accessibility of an element I can literally hover over with the element inspector and you'll find out very quickly in this little box the contrast ratio how it's doing on the accessibility DOM its font its color it's everything really quick and I think that's one of the best things about the Chrome developer tools it's the speed that it gives you as a developer to work as a front-end dev to just carry on go into the console uh, throw in some commands and just get going. Being able to check your sources, your debugger, your network, your performance, Lighthouse. Like there's so many things that you can say about Lighthouse here. The fact that you can check for your accessibility really quickly, do a quick run on your desktop, check for performance. You can check for security. You can even do some uh, memory uh, debugging. It's just absolutely amazing. So this is a massive reason why you should be using Chromium browsers. So browsers like uh, Brave, Opera, uh, Arc, and at the very least Chrome, even though they kind of run invasive scripts in the background, it's a pretty good dev tool set and it's a good argument to just use it for dev work, but you know, each to their own. Another great tool to have is Wave. Now Wave is a Chrome extension or a Chromium extension that you can download on all Chromium browsers. And essentially it's an accessibility tool, but it is one of the best free accessibility tools out there. So for example, if I'm on a web page and I've just finished a bit of work and I want to quickly check, is my work accessible in a very like brief way, I'll just click wave the icon here and then instantly 
it tells me whether something is accessible or not. In fact, let's get out of it. Let's go to Wapalizer. Let's check that out. So let's check out Wave on Wapalizer to give you an idea of what it might be if it doesn't have everything passing. So you can see here there's errors and you can go into detail and check exactly what those errors are. You can tick off what you want to see and what you don't want to see. So I can go and uh, have a look at these if I want. So we can take off everything that's passing. I can tell you how the structural elements are. So we'll get all these off and we'll just have a quick look so we can see all the errors. So you can see uh, there's an error here and it tells you exactly which element is the problem. And it gives you another uh, idea of what might be wrong here. So it's saying it's an empty button and it has no value or text, which is an icon button, which is understandable, but you can have to see how you can make that accessible. And then there's no language on the actual file itself, the HTML document. So yeah, it's a really cool one to just spin up really quick and get a really quick idea of what's uh, wrong with your site. And it is a bit more, in detail than the Chrome DevTools. So you do get a bit more information than you would uh, normally with that. But Chrome DevTools are always improving and their accessibility tools are always getting better. So the last one I wanted to show you is called Document Design Mode. Now it's a, it's a DOM method that you can use in the console in your DevTools. So if you go to console here and we just type in uh, document.designmode and you can see it's currently set to off. And then if we set it to on and press enter, we can now see we have activated de uh, design mode. So what that means is every element within the browser becomes editable. So you could say this here suddenly becomes Curious Bytes DevTools. And the benefit of this is essentially to go around and test things in real time in the browser. So you might want to test uh, how strong components are, how strong elements are, and how strong a layout is by stress testing it with information and, and seeing whether you know a layout or a component can handle it. So for example, if we add lots of text here, can this layout handle it? You know, what is the limit? Is it built in a way that can handle lots of information and that can if we go here and we add lots of text here can this handle it so the answer would be it can't handle big words and now that we've had a look at this we have found out there's no clamping here there's no way to wrap the text onto the next line um, and it's not been set up in a way to do that so that's something that you find by playing around with the document design mode really quickly and you can break layouts and test layouts and stress test them really well. And that is the document design mode. So those were six browser based tools that I think every front end developer should have. So if you found that useful, please do make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this on Curious Byte. Also check me out on Twitter at The Hashton. Otherwise, stay curious and I'll see you in the next one.